Back in 1994, I was asked to come visit a man in prison. This man was one of the most well-known human beings on the planet in 1990s, early 1990s. And he was well known for all the wrong reasons. He was in the penitentiary because he, was, he had the largest evangelistic ministry in the world, the largest television ministry in the world. And yet he committed crimes and was arrested and sentenced for 45 years and then it was reduced to five. He had read the first book that I wrote in prison and asked that I would come and visit him. I remember walking into that penitentiary. He comes in with his prison guard. And he grabs me and he holds me and he won't let me go. And he, he looks at me and he says, did you write this book? This was the first book I wrote or did, did a ghostwriter? I said, no, I wrote it. He said, we have so much to talk about and we only have 90 minutes. And I remember we sat down. The first thing this, I mean, infamous preacher said to me is John, this prison wasn't God's judgment on my life. It was his mercy. He said, if I would have continued living the way I was living, I would have ended up spending eternity in the lake of fire separated from God. Now he had my attention. So he told me his whole story, how Jesus came into his cell and delivered him his first year of incarceration. And then he shared with me how they spent three hours every day in the scriptures, particularly the gospels. After 20 minutes of sharing his story, I felt I can ask the number one question I have. I said, listen, when I got saved, you were the best known preacher on the planet. I said, I watched you weep as you preached the gospel. I watched you get so many people saved. I need to know something. At what point did you fall out of love with Jesus? And he looked at me and he said, John, I didn't. I said, whoa, now my walls went up. I said, wait a minute. You committed adultery in 1983 and I named the woman. All your trial went on in 89. You were arrested in 89 and all your trial went on in 9. You tell me all the stuff you're doing those seven years, you're telling me you love Jesus? He said, John, I loved him all the way through it. And he sees the confusion in me. And he said, John, I didn't fear God. He said, there are millions of Americans just like me. They love Jesus, but they don't fear God. It is by the fear of the Lord that we depart from evil. It is by the fear of the Lord that we get free from sin. So what is the fear of the Lord? It's when we stand in awe of God. It's when we tremble before him. It's when we honor, reverence, esteem him above anything or anyone else. It is when we literally take on God's heart. We love what he loves and we hate what he hates. Legalists so pervert the beautiful things of God and legalists have perverted the fear of God. That's why people stay away from it. The legalist is the person that says, I fear God, that's why I hate those sinners. No, you don't fear God at all, sir, because you hate what he loves. God loves those quote sinners you're talking about so much that he came and died for them. So you don't fear God at all because you actually hate what he loves. What God hates is the sin that unmakes those people that he loves. Amen? Amen. So this is why the scripture says, by the fear of the Lord, Proverbs 8, 13, we depart from sin. And this, excuse me, this is why Proverbs 8, 13 says, all who fear the Lord will hate. Everybody say hate. Hate evil. If you want to see it in the New Testament, the apostle Paul writes in Romans chapter 12, he says, abhor what is evil. The word abhor means strongly hate. All Christians love righteousness, but that's not all. That's not the only thing he said. Because you've loved righteousness and hated sin, sin is lawlessness. Lawlessness is the definition of sin. It means you're a law unto yourself. It means you choose what is right for your life, not God. That's what lawlessness is. Eve wasn't drawn to the evil side of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. She was drawn to the good side. When she saw it was good, she chose what was, what she thought was good for her life outside of what God said, which is stupidity because God is our creator. He knows what makes us. He knows what breaks us. And we think we're smarter than God. This is what the nations are trying to do. They're trying to cast the rule, the slavery of God off of us. Why do the nations rage? Read it in the new living. We don't want to be in slavery to God. (laughs) 